Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us on the Real Estate Investor Show, Hard Money for Real Estate Investors. We are a private lender in the Southeast for, for what? What do we do? Real estate for investors. Real estate professionals. Mm -hmm. If you have a project that you'd like us to take a look at, go to carolinahardmoney.com and click on the Apply Now tab. If you're a passive investor looking for passive returns, then click on the Accredited Investor tab. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe and hit the bell. Don't forget about Wednesdays with Wendy. Wendy devotes 30 minutes uh, per person on Wednesdays to talk about anything real estate. Uh, get on her calendar. The link will be right below. She's usually booked out a couple of months in advance. Our friend Brad Chandler is joining us and he's going to talk about mindset. He's, he's a very successful real estate investor. I've known him for years. We're in the collective genius together. Um, that's where most of the smart people are. I don't know why I was there, but <laughs> actually that's what you do in a mastermind, right? That's hey, Maybe. you want to be the dumbest person in the room. <laughs> Absolutely. Maybe we need to work on your mindset, Bill. <laughs> uh, thank you, Brad. I appreciate that. How are you doing? Thank you for joining us. I'm awesome. Thanks for having me. <laughs> So um, before we get started, let's talk about um, our current real estate environment. Uh, you know, we're in a downturn, obviously, we're uh, going to be going through a recession. We don't know how, if it's gonna be a soft landing or a hard landing. Either way, uh, the Fed has pretty much put the brakes on real estate right now when you double what it costs to own a home uh, with the high interest rates. Um, we're in a little bit of a different business, uh, you know, because we're lending money to, to real estate investors. Uh, in, in my opinion, because we're so far behind in single family, uh, I don't think it's going to be as bad as people think it's going to be, or at least touting. Uh, I think it's going to be a little bit of a decline, but heck, we're already 40% higher than we were two years ago in values. So even if they come down 10% or 15%, or 20, we're still yeah. way above. So what's your opinion and how are things going with you? Yeah. So I, I mean, I agree with you. Um, the, if you just look at the, the, the five year, 10 year uh, supply, there's just so, uh, so little supply available, right? So supply and demand, right? How does it work? It's basic economics. If you've got no supply, the prices go up, right? So, um, I can't see uh, having a conversation in five years where the prices aren't up. Now, are we going to go through a dip? Have we already started to see a dip in a lot of places? We have seen, uh, in my opinion, substantial dips. I mean, a forty, fifty thousand dollar hits, which are in the DC and metro market, which are, you know, six, seven, eight percent that from like six months ago or a year ago. So we've already seen it. Um, is it going to come way down like it did in two thousand eight? No, I don't think so. Um, I think that. Uh, one the supply is is like i said is low and then two you've just got too many billions of dollars or trillions of the dollars or lots of lots of dollars chasing uh single family so i don't think you're going to ever see because as soon as the prices start going down all the investors are going to start buying up everything yeah absolutely i mean that's and that's what everything that we're talking about with other investors is you know how much dry powder are you keeping for all the opportunities that we're going to be scooping up here in the next, you know, 12 to 18, 24 months, whatever it is. Um, you know, everyone's talking about foreclosures. I don't think it's going to be, we're not, you know, they're going to talk about how foreclosures are up 40%. We're still slightly below pre pandemic norms. So uh, it's, it's not quite what, uh, what the media is making it out to be. Uh, but yeah, there's there's a lot of opportunities. There will be dips because when you have years with 20% appreciation, which is what what is that? Is that eight times the norm? <laughs> you know? Yeah, like, the average you're, you're is like see, three and a half. You're going to see things taper off. Um, so, did, and you said, uh, Brad, your market is in the DC metro area. Yeah, we operate in DC metro, Baltimore metro, and we do a little bit in Los Angeles, and uh, really, really, really tight inventory. Um, there's just not much inventory. 
And, you know, one thing for sure that, you know, I predicted this eight months ago, six months ago, it's rates started rising, that, that the, the volume is down. Like, you know, there's just not as many houses being sold. When you've got someone that wants to move from their house, like you said, Bill, and it's going to cost them twice as much for the same exact mortgage, why are they going to move? They're only going to move if it's a divorce or a death or they have to move for a job. Otherwise, there's a lot of people every year that move because they're like, okay, I want to move to this place because it's nicer or whatever, or I... I you know, believe in the politics there more, um, but they're not going to move now when it's, you know, their interest rate's going to go from 2.75 to six or six and a half. Yeah, I think you're going to see, uh, are you seeing more people doing more creative financing, like seller financing and and stuff like that? I mean, we, I hear, I hear about it a lot. I, I don't, we don't, we don't, we don't do much of that. Um, but, but I, I, it, and, you know, I, I'm in the same circles, Bill, as a lot of the investors around the country. And that's, that's kind of like the hot buzz topic now is creative financing. Yeah, if you can do a subject two um, and, and capture those really good rates, the, the problem is uh, talking someone into uh, letting you take over their mortgage. Convincing them that you're going to make those payments right. year in and year and, out. And the yeah. fact that they still have to qualify for the next mortgage if they're moving to another house, and that, that makes it tough. Yeah. Um, well, you, and you've also got these teachers teaching that as long as the cash flows, don't, don't, don't worry about the sales price. And I'm like, hmm. Um, I do not want to buy a three hundred thousand dollar house. Excuse me, a, a mortgage that, on, that has three hundred thousand dollars on it, and now the house is worth two fifty. I don't. I don't want to be held up with a bunch of product where I'm fifty percent underwater. It's crazy. And then and then you go get fifty of these things, and now the rental market implodes. Who's going to pay the mortgage? These investors right. don't have money escrowed for a year. You know, so it's um. It just like it's it just some people portray it as way way more rosier than it actually is if one thing we've learned is when you're over leveraged you're uh, limited with your exit strategies and you never want to be limited with your exit strategies what scares me the most about people though holding on to their dry powder is that they're keeping it in cash and they're at, they're actually losing money if you can invest it into something that's paying somewhere close to inflation uh, at least it's working and it's not going backwards <laughs> right you know the the balance there is how long do i have to keep it tied up uh, and am i going to be able to you know get those opportunities if my money's tied up you know right where yeah but at the same time you know you can't have it just sitting there not not doing anything right sure. yeah absolutely well i know that uh i i geek out and nerd out on a lot of uh um, brain and mindset books. Um, I'm really interested to, see, to hear what Brad has to say about uh, the changes that he's made and the, the the things that you've done, Brad, that have, I think you said, changed your life, right? Completely, yeah. So so let's touch on mindset really quick, because I think that's a misnomer a lot of times. Um, I was on a call yesterday with a coach who teaches uh, people how to wholesale residential real estate. And he's like, you know, I've got a bunch of students that just aren't doing anything. Like I got to work on their mindset. You know, I got to put that into my, into my program. And I said, listen, Nathan, um, you can teach mindset all day long. And what is mindset? Like, you know, be more disciplined and, and uh, do affirmations and um, just think positive thoughts. And all, all of that stuff is, is like out the window because What's really happening is if you're not where you are in life or you're in a bad marriage or you drink too much, or you're overweight, all of these problems are driven by behaviors. Those behaviors are all driven by thinking. So every single problem that you have in your life right now starts with a thought. Those thoughts are subconscious thoughts that were programmed from the third trimester when you're in your mother's womb till eight, nine, 10, 11 years old they were programmed as a result of experiences that you went through in your life, mostly stressful, mostly when you didn't have control. You know, I'm trying not to word the, use the word trauma because it turns a lot of people off because they're like, well, I didn't have trauma. And I'm like, uh, yeah, you did. Everyone <laughs> trauma, has trauma. trauma. Trauma isn't being raped or locked in a cage. Trauma can be as benign as your little sister comes home from the hospital from being born and you feel your parents love her more than you. And that creates a meth addict when he's 22 years old. That can be trauma. Mm -hmm. So these thoughts 
our 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 brain's programming of a coping mechanism to get through that stressful situation your beautiful brain is doing exactly what it should you're six years old something bad happens to a six-year-old what does a six-year-old say to get through it i must be bad that's what i said when my dad would hit me i must be bad something's wrong with me so that was actually helpful it helped me process and get through that when he hit me at 47 years old when my subconscious brain is still telling me i'm bad it doesn't serve me what does it end up what does it end up in it ends up with me drinking to feel more comfortable smoking marijuana to feel more comfortable uh two failed marriages uh five business mistakes that cost me nine million dollars and i could go on and on and on and on so people when you have problems in your life and you're like i don't understand why i get so mad at my kids i don't understand why i get so mad when my wife does this i don't understand why in business i'm trying to do 10 different things and my business has chaos i don't know why when i come home i have to drink two glasses of wine or light up that joint so so anyway every single problem you have in your life can be traced back to your subconscious mind dictating the behavior and the crazy thing is you don't even know it right i didn't know until i did my work and looked back on why did i buy a 42 foot boat and decide to go to the bahamas when i didn't even know about boating my, i didn't wake up one day and be like hey let's get a boat and then the world will think i'm worthy no my subconscious brain drove me to that those five business mistakes that cost me nine million dollars i didn't wake up and say i'm gonna do this so if you're struggling in life, you've got to go back and look at what happened to you when, you, when your brain was programmed. And, and you can change everything because guess what? You weren't born an alcoholic. You weren't born someone with depression. You weren't born someone with, with anxiety. You formed those things. They were learned behavior. And if you learned them, guess what? You can unlearn them. Yeah. And, and you know, the thing is about entrepreneurs, a lot of us that are in real estate, we have this high drive to succeed. And that's also from things that have happened to us in our past, why we want to succeed or why we have this drive and pointed in the wrong direction. It can morph into a lot of different things. Um, ha have you read the book, uh, The Deepest Well? I think it's by Dr. Nadine Burke Harris. I have it, not. Uh, it, it talks It talks about all of this. It, it's, it's fascinating how like our brains, I mean, because we're, you know, between the, like, like you talked about the third trimester up to the age of three, we're creating something like, like, a, I can't remember, like how many millions of neural connections per second, millions, and, millions, and, yeah, yeah millions per second. And, and like all those things, you don't realize that as you become an adult, your subconscious mind makes probably around 90 to 95% of the decisions for you throughout the day. And it's making those based off of previous thoughts, decisions and things that have happened to you in the past. And you don't realize it until like, like you said, you actually stop and say, wait, wait, hold on. What am I doing? And why am I doing this? Yeah. Awareness, all change begins with awareness. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, 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 I mean, I, I love that stuff. I mean, the more we become aware, I think the more we become intentional with what we do and the more intentional we become, the more successful we are. And success doesn't mean more zeros in your bank account. Success means just like you said earlier, like you're happier than you've ever been in your entire life. And I think a lot of people in real estate and especially a lot of entrepreneurs, they're just, it's that struggle to be happy. If I can do that one more wholesale, that one more flip, maybe I'll have that two more zeros in my bank account and then I'll be happy. And um, it, I don't think that that's going to do it. Uh, it, it won't do it because everything you've ever needed to be happy is inside you right now. And I had Annie um, on a podcast. She was part of she was her and her her husband at the time were instrumental in my they, they actually led my transformation. And she was talking about how entrepreneurs, most entrepreneurs get into business because they want to control everything because they lack control as a child. And my driving force for business, now that I look back, why did I get into real estate? Because it had it had the potential to make a lot of money. And I thought money would bring me worthiness and happiness. And it doesn't. I mean, look around the world at all the people who, who have mil hundreds of millions of dollars in overdose from drugs. So yeah, it's a big thing to learn. It's And it's it, you got to learn it sometimes the hard way that uh, nothing will bring you more happiness. And that's like you said, you're right, that entrepreneurs are always charging more money, more money. If I get to here, I'll be happy. It doesn't work that way. Life doesn't work that way. Yeah, I was, I was telling, uh, I think, Wendy and Bill the other day, I'm, I'm reading this uh, book, uh, Confessions of an Economic Hitman. And uh, in it, he's talking about how, you know, America, the United States of America is the wealthiest, most successful society that has ever been. And we have the most unhappy and highest suicide rates of 
any society that's ever been on record. It's like, why? And it's like, well, well, well we're talking about why right now. Absolutely. We, we have the highest like um, rates of prescriptions for SSRIs, which are antidepressants and anti-anxieties. So the, literally the trend is going up for prescriptions, but hospitalizations for those same exact things are going up. Um, it just shows you the drugs don't work. For the most part, they don't work. Uh, you need to go back. The only way you fix mental or physical pain is to go back to the source of the pain and heal the source that's creating the pain in your life. What makes a successful person is a self-aware person. And the more you can be self-aware and actually dive into into you know your own mind and your your own, you know, I'll call them issues, you know, um, the better you are as a partner, the better you are as a leader, the better you are as, you know, um, as you know, anything that you do in in life or in business, or at least that's what I, I believe. So it's very important to me and I'm, I'm, you know, I'm super, super interested in anything that, uh, like any books or any trainings that you've done or, or would recommend to people that can help. Yeah. I mean, like one of my mentors is Gabor Mate, Dr. Gabor Mate. Um, he's just a fantastic person. I've, I've read probably 40 something books. Um, the two that I recommend the most are, uh, radical acceptance by Tara Brock, B R A C H. And then a book called The Way to Love by Anthony DeMello. Um, two fantastic books on the subject. Um, but there's a lot. There's a lot out there. Um, what it comes down to is people don't even know. Like I'm, I'm, What I said earlier is people don't even know the cause of their suffering. Hopefully after listening to this, now you can understand it. It always goes back. 99.9% .9 of the time goes back to your childhood. And how do you escape from prison? You've got to know that you're in prison, right? Nine out of 10 of my clients, when I ask them, they say, I had a happy childhood where my needs were met. And 15 minutes in the conversation, I'm like, no, you didn't. Like there's, there's something about our brain. We can't hold conflicting thoughts. So there was good and there was bad in most kids, um, you know, childhood. And they happen to hang on to the, to the good. And I think by saying they had a bad childhood implicates their parents. So a lot of people are like, Whoa, dude, I didn't have a bad childhood. And it's just the opposite. Like you'll never hear me cast blame. You'll, ne you'll never hear me say like, you're messed up because of your parents. It's their fault. It's not their fault. It is no one's fault. They did the best they could do under their circumstances. They didn't wake up one day and say, Hey, I'm going to mess up my son or daughter. Their, their, their son or daughter had issues because of them. Why did they have issues because of their parents and their parents, parents and their parents, parents. So we're involved in this multi-generational curse. And all we do is we just, we, we, when you're, when you're unwhole, right. And a whole person is like an enlightened monk, right? They, they don't care what anyone thinks they're, they have complete self-love. That would be an enlightened person. Let's just call all the rest of us unwhole people. Um, an unwhole person goes and meets with another unwhole person. They have unwhole offspring, and then they just repeat the process over and over and over again. So, so people are like, oh, well, alcoholism runs in my family. Depression runs in my family. No, it doesn't. It doesn't run in your family. You know what runs in your family is the trauma that's created from your alcoholism and drug use. That's what runs in your family. So you don't have to like, I never get, I'm, 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 I can't understand why people want to hold on to the genetic thing that you can't fix when the truth of it is you can fix the real cause of your problem. Have you uh, have you looked into uh, epigenetics? A little bit. Yep. Uh, yeah. I've, I've you know I've, I've listened to some of the stuff around Joe Dispenza. Yeah. Fascinating stuff. Fascinating. Yeah, so, you know, it's 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 one of those you know like we talk about nature versus nurture. We can't change genetics. Actually, we can um, through you know environment and stressors we can actually change our genetics and we can change the genetics that we pass down to our offspring. Um, and they can change it too, but it takes self-awareness to do so. Um, it's a fascinating subject. We, we don't have time to go into it here, but uh, it, you, know, you know, so many things affect what we do and how we do and what we don't realize is how much, you know, we're all struggling for control, but we don't realize how much control we truly do have when we you know when we actually open and our, ourselves up to 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 looking at ourselves and loving ourselves yeah so so part what, what I mean, if we boil this all down right 99% of the pro, every world problem i mean every world problem is an individual's lack of self love why does someone not have self love because when they were born 
They had self-love. God made them as a perfect image of himself, right? They're perfect creatures. Why don't they have self-love? They lose self-love through the pain, the trauma, the stresses of childhood, right? So how, how, do you, how, how do you fix something if you don't know? It goes back to awareness, right? So if we'd had this conversation, gentlemen, three years ago, and you said, Brad, do you have self-love? I'd be like, yeah, like what's all this woo-woo stuff they're talking about? I love myself, right? It, I, I didn't love myself. And all you had to do is look at my results of my life to show that I didn't. So I developed this self-love quiz. It's 12 questions. It's free at bradchandler.com forward slash quiz. Go take that right now. And if you show any, there's three categories that it will tell you, extreme self-love, mid self-love and lack of self-love. If you score on those lower two levels, I guarantee you that you're not anywhere near where you should be in terms of an optimal life. And I guarantee you that every area of your life from relationships to business, to health, to intimacy is affected. The great thing is, and what you should be elated about is that you have the ability to, to dramatically change your life now that you know that. I didn't know that. I, I, I got help by trying to help my son for his anxiety. And this lady says, do you realize you have a tick? You blink profusely when you talk about your childhood. You may have unresolved childhood trauma. And sure enough, I did. So now I've developed a tool for all those people out there like, I love myself and I don't care what other people think. All right, go take my quiz. And if you love yourself, God bless you. But if you don't know that your life can radically change for the better. Yeah. Well, I would like to add in that uh, your audience, so to speak, um, is mostly going to be entrepreneurs, I'm assuming. I know you want to help everyone, uh, but we're surrounded by uh, uh, high achieving entrepreneurs. I think that those folks are going to be the easiest to recognize that they have uh, some issues because they have been programmed over their life. Most of them have been either commissioned or self-employed most of their life. They don't blame others for, uh, let's say, uh, a business failure or not making enough money this particular quarter. They they know it's their fault. It's in their hands. They're the ones that. Uh, are in control of these things. They don't blame others for doing it. So I think those type of people are gonna be the ones that, for the most part, there's always exceptions, but I think those are the people that are gonna be easiest to uh, become aware uh, that they have some issues. That, so, don't you? So, uh, well, guess what the name of the Facebook group is that I launched this morning? What? <laughs> no, 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 no bullshit. How to be happier for entrepreneurs. <laughs> there you yeah, go. It, it's a private group. If you want to join it, you know, just you, you can search for it or go to bradchannel.com forward slash uh, face, uh, Facebook and it will come up. Perfect. And so, you know, because we are real estate based, we all are um, pull it back into. So since you've been on this journey and learning all these things, how has it affected your real estate business and, you know, anything else that you're doing in life? Yeah, well, I mean, it's affected everything, everything, my relationships, my, my health, uh, um, my happiness, but my business, um, I switched from trying to make a ton of money to prove myself to I don't need to prove anything. Let's see what the biggest impact I can make on my employees, team members, investors and sellers. And we had our best year ever uh, last year. Coincidence? Maybe. I don't think so. Um, I started focusing on what was important rather than trying to make a bunch of money. Yeah, that's awesome. But when you do that, you end up making a bunch of money. Boom. You got it. When you focus on impact. So this co company, Brad Chandler Coaching, that I just started last year is the first company since I was seven years old. I started my, I was selling blow pops at seven, in seventh grade. It's the first company I ever started where it's just not, it, I started thinking, I never thought how much money can I make? It's always every day, how many people can I help and how can I help those people the best? And if we talk in five years, I make, I, I make, I probably will make more money in this than I ever will in, in real estate because my focus is in the right place. So that's my, that's my parting gift to entrepreneurs is, is stop trying to make a bunch of money to prove your worth or find happiness. Cause you'll never do it, figure out your impact. And when you make this shift towards self-love, it's, it's really easy to identify your purpose in life. There's so many people lost out there. They don't know what they're doing because they don't have their purpose. Well, they don't have their, you can't find your purpose when you're in a fight or flight situation. Like if a lion's chasing you, you can't really think of your purpose. You're like trying to get away. Most Americans who lack self-love spend 75% of their day in a triggered state in a fight or flight mode. Yeah. So yeah, you got to change that. Yeah. Uh, listen, thank you so much, Brad. We're going to have the links to the books and your uh, Facebook page, Facebook and page and all website. that stuff is mm -hmm. all going to be down below. So. 
th- thank you again for, for joining us. We thank really you so much. Seeing you again. Thank you. Love heals all. Thank you so much for joining us on the Real Estate Investor Show. We are Carolina Capital Management. We are a private lender in the Southeast for real estate investors. If you have a project you'd like us to take a look at, go to carolinahardmoney.com and click on the Apply Now tab. If you're a passive investor looking for passive returns, click on the Accredited Investor tab. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, hit the bell, and sign up for Wednesdays with Wendy. Thanks. See you guys next week.